Hey everybody, this is Saul Castaneda with MCSC Green Wheels and today man, I'm going to show you how to make cupcakes. I'm not. Uh, basically what I'm doing right now, I'm just gearing myself up. I just finished running all the power cables to my alternator, my starter, and to the inside, kind of like the home run into the batter, into the uh, inside cabin with the hot wire that's going to attach to our power box for our four, uh, performance box here and then into our dashboard and the fuses and what I meant by dashboard was the steering column so now we're gonna have full power gonna run in there we already got them already pretty much set here so this guy right here as you guys can see this main power is gonna feed our fuse now this guy is got a hundred I think it's a hundred and what it's gonna do it's gonna blow now the top it goes directly to the inside of the car which is already hooked up to one of our distribution blocks so now that I did the, the power, I'm going to go ahead and run the ground. Now I took my time to do the ground because ground is really important in these cars. And from what I've seen and dealt with over the years of dealing with cars, especially with Fox bodies, ground is always a sketchy place. They always have it here. You got to drill here. You got to look under here. You got to make an extra hole there. It doesn't matter. It's always somewhere. But you know, it gets weird. From what we've seen and what we see in a lot of the videos, a lot of guys, you know, have a hard time starting the car, and it's usually due to a bad ground. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make my my work a lot easier since we're already here. We're at the seven year mark, and we've been building it. We're getting close to this uh, to start. I'm going to make sure I have ground everywhere, and I do mean everywhere. I want to tap into the bottom of the seat and get a ground lead if I need it to ground myself or ground my radio, ground an amplifier, ground whatever. I want to make sure that I got it everywhere because, uh, again, it's very important to the engine because we need it to start. So I'm going to go ahead and run that process today using our four gauge cable. And right now what I'm going to find out is, you know, how much ground am I getting through this car? Now, mind you guys, we built this thing from the ground up. The only thing original on this car are the two doors and the trunk. This car used to have a sunroof. Go figure, right? So what I did right now to my ohm meter, I just slapped it to the ohms and the conductivity test to check for wires. So if you, you know, this is a great way to check for, for brakes. So what happens is it just sends a small current and you get a beep. It means you're making contact. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Now we already installed our brace right here, our upper brace. So figuring I already pre-drilled these holes, these holes are already in. So I'm just going to touch that there and then I'm going to go to a random part around the engine. So right here. Oh yeah. Now my ground isn't connected now. I don't have ground connected to this in, to this car at the moment. I just have the main power running to the inside and one of our uh, distribution blocks already connected. So this is a really good sign because it means I have conductivity there. Let me see how far if I go even further. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's good. That means that that's even better. This is a stretch, but oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah. That uh, makes me really happy because that means that when I do the ground setup that I'm about to do, I'm going to do a single point, two wires, and then run into the block. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come from the battery to a union that I'm going to create for my wires, one to my ECM and one to the cooling fans. And then I'm going to distribute, go around there, attach to the sway bar screw with an extra nut that I got there and then run my ground strap from there over to the block. I got a nice little solid ground strap which we'll show you once we get started. Right now, I'm very happy that I got connectivity everywhere. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill that hole and get started. You know um, that we replaced these frame rails. Duty due to the fact that that one on the driver's side was completely gone after the car was painted. After the body guy had looked at it and said it was good to go after we found that out so we got on the horn and we had to go look for these frame rails so something different that people don't know for the inside of these frame rails what I did I actually took a, a u-channel kind of uh, I think it was like about eighth inch stock and just cut like little triangles like this and welded them all through the inside of both frame rails you can't see it because obviously we had to cover them up to the top but what you can see is this one right here I made like little pyramids on the inside just to give it a little bit more reinforcement. So I was already snooping around over here because I need to and I noticed that I have a little gapping right in here that I don't have one of the one of my little uh, pyramids that I built in here so I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put my screw hole right here. Now we could use a self tapper but that's what uh, you know kindergartners do we're professionals here. What I did I went ahead and got me one of these uh, threaded inserts which is very sexy, it's uh, zinc coated. 
and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill a hole. This is a quarter inch by, I think, 25 or 16. I think it's 25. So I'm going to use this screw, make it look super professional. And this is an 1132 uh, drill bin. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this guy in there, and now I'm going to have a nice little sexy screw instead of just having some thread, uh, some thread chaser that eventually will warp the hole, and then you'll lose ground. I don't want that to happen. And I believe that because of the drilling, I will have enough bare metal, and this is metal, and it's going to you know, carry on the conductivity. I'm pretty sure it'll work out just fine when I run my, my ground to it. In here. Metal contact. So for here is to our ECM. He's gonna go in there for right now until we get the measurements for the one we're gonna do for our battery. Hold that, buddy. Drop. Be right here to the screw. So, I'm gonna cut this guy. I'm gonna give it a little bit more slack. Never hurt. And uh, that should give it a nice professional look. So I have this uh, heat shrink, but I can fit it over this, so it's not a big deal. That's it. Like that. I'm going to drop this guy right over it and give it a nice super seal. Now that I got at least this one cut out, I'm going to do my jumper. And what I meant by doing my jumper, I'm going to go from the screw that we just made right here, from this entry right here. And then we're going to jump right over to this screw on the sway bar. And then, from that sway bar, I know that I'm going to be grounding partially of the engine. But from the sway bar over to the engine, I'm going to be using this ground strap right here to ensure that I have ground all the way to my engine. So, let's get that done, and then we'll see if we have conductivity all the way through, right before I connect the battery. I bought this kit on Amazon, and then this is the kit with all the eyeball screws and stuff like that. And they're aluminum. But man, they work great, they look good, and what I was really impressed with was the heat shrink. It's pretty thick, and I thought it would be like, was all one size, and I figured, hey man, it's going to be really hard on, you know, it's going to tear or something. I found out that this is like water soluble, like it's water resistant heat shrink, because you'll see towards the end of it, it starts to let go of a glue from the inside. So as you heat it, it glues, so, which means to me, as you can see right there, it's starting to come out. Right, there's the bottom, you see how it's starting to get shiny? Yeah, buddy. Which means to me that this guy will be securely safe from water at all times. We can only hope, though. Again, this is Amazon. This is the starter wire for start. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and, now, this is going to be my screw. I'm going to go ahead and just jump them right over. I'm going to put an eyeball right here on this side and get them right to this screw. And then from here, I'm going to just jump on over right to the, uh, the motor mount right there. And I think that that should give me plenty of ground and uh, I will be okay. Obviously. So, for the time being... I'm going to put these bad boys together. Alright. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and ground this guy to my, my sway bar right there. Got an extra nut. Actually, what I'll do I'll sandwich these two. I'll sandwich it with because this way I know I'm getting a solid ground coming in. So let's put this guy in first. Then 
jumper. Perfect. Now, put this nut. Now I got a self locking on there. I don't want it to walk. I know that that bolt there is solid because it goes to our sway bar. And uh, that's good right there. And now, like I said, I'm going to go directly to our motor mount. I know that my engine's gonna be well grounded. <laughs> I hope. I think going all these extra steps would get me what I want, right? So we're about to find out. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all this down and let it set. socket. I'm going to finish it off right here. Bam. The important part about this video was to make sure that I got my ground evenly distributed which is going to come straight from my battery to the block to the chassis of the engine then from the chassis to the car to the to the block itself so I already ran the cables I brought my trusty meter back out and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go from the cable that I ran to the distribution point where they're meeting and then over to the engine to make sure that I have conductivity and if I have that that means I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have some pretty kick-ass ground and I won't have to worry about it the good thing about adding the distribution block on the inside it gives me the ability to run an extra ground line like let's say if I want to amplify it later in time I can because I also have the extra um, distribution block for my power block here on the pillar on the side of the passenger side here. So I could do all that, give me some up, uh, some better options to, to mess around with the car a little later. Right now the important thing is just to make sure that I get it to start. We're almost there because right now after this we start to install this dash and get the Dakota in and the steering wheel. We've been holding off on that because we want to install the Dakota in, take our time run it right, run all the wires correctly, get all that good stuff and all the extra components that are going to come in there. You know how it is, man. So we're going to go ahead and just make sure we do it right so that the steering wheel is not completely in our way, but we will install the dash. So what I'm going to do right now, let's check this conductivity. I showed you earlier how it is from here. Now, we didn't have a ground running anywhere, but uh, that means to me that if I can get conductivity from here to there to all the way over there, right off of this point, that means that the it's touching the frame and the body and it's making good contact. I have my dedicated ground line right here, and you saw us. I'm gonna put that guy right in there, and you saw us go right here to this junction point. So I'm gonna find out. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Then we're gonna jump right over from here and go right here to this other. Oh yeah, making contact, buddy. Main connector, so which is the main, which is this cable right here that goes all the way to the battery, which is gonna be going to the battery with the dedicated ground. So as you guys can tell, I got good ground right there. And then I went and I jumped it from here over to here. And as you guys can tell, I'm not even touching the cable. That means I got great ground coming through here. My more important thing is to make sure I get it to the block. We put on this really cool fancy negative uh, ground stripe. Works perfect. Now, look at that. Whoa. I'm happy. Hey guys, I want to thank everybody on our Facebook page. I want to thank everybody on our Instagram page. Do the things for me. Jump on there. Give us a like. Give us a comment. You know. And go on to our Tumblr. Go on to our. We're on Reddit. Pinterest. Go on to our Pinterest. Go on to Pinterest. our. Go. You know what? We're on TikTok. We're not doing the sexy dances yet, but we will. We'll get to it. I trust me. You know, uh, Mano Negra will take his shirt off eventually, not me.
because, you know, I, I, it's overload. I'll stop the internet. Kim, you ain't got shit on me. Anyways, guys, more importantly, I want to thank everybody here on our YouTube channel. Guys, thank you for all the input. Thanks for all those guys that go on there and give us some insights on what they've done before, how they've changed things up. They do help. Our good friend Glenn up there, man, he gives us always some, some kind of information what we're doing. You were right, bud. That's exactly what I was trying to do. Just start little points. Make sure they have dedicated power here and there, so I make sure that I'm not kind of scrambling towards the end of it all. I uh, want to say happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Hey, everybody in YouTube land, do me a favor because it helps a lot. Leave us a like, leave subscribe. us a comment, and don't forget, don't forget, subscribe please, subscribe please, subscribe please. I don't want to keep saying that, but I will. Next thing you know, I'm going to bring a little song up here just to make sure that you subscribe. Guys, we'll catch you later. Let's get this puppy rolling. See you soon.